Do you have ongoing fatigue and trying to understand how it might relate to Epstein-Barr virus? My name is Dr. Taranella, and in this video, we're going to look at how to read Epstein-Barr virus test results. We'll look at what some of the positive antibodies mean, how to understand this in the context of your symptoms, and we'll look at some case studies that will help you better understand what might be going on with your Epstein-Barr virus test results. So again, my name is Dr. Taranella, and if you're new to this channel, I just want you to know that I'm making these videos to help you go beyond the basics of your health, whether it's a confusing lab test, symptom, or diagnosis. I make these videos to help you get a better understanding of what's going on with your health. So if you like this kind of information on nutrition, health, hormones, etc., click on the like button and don't forget to subscribe to get more videos like this one. Now for a quick disclaimer, the information contained in this video is for informational purposes only. It's not intended as treatment for any medical condition or a substitute for seeing an actual doctor or medical professional. It should be used as an educational guide to deepen your understanding of your own health and treatment success. If medical attention is needed, don't delay in seeking that attention. All right, let's look at how to read Epstein-Barr virus test results. So in this video, we're going to look at how to read Epstein-Barr virus test results. So first thing is Epstein-Barr virus test results typically involve several different measurements of antibodies. And these measurements provide us information about the current activity of the virus in the body at the time of the blood drop. The antibody-based test is the most commonly used, so that's what we're going to focus on here in terms of looking at and reading Epstein-Barr virus test results. Now, because there are several different antibodies that can be tested and that usually are included in this test, confusion often arises even amongst doctors as to what they actually mean. So in this video on how to read Epstein-Barr test results, I'll show you hypothetical results and how you might look at them. We'll also look at a simple way to understand them and a more nuanced way to look at and understand the results. So EBV antibody tests measure the level of antibodies of the virus in your blood. If you've been infected with the Epstein-Barr virus, your body's going to produce different amounts of antibodies and different antibodies at different time intervals as an infection progresses. In addition, each one of those antibodies can remain in your body at different time intervals, sometimes months, sometimes years. And there is variance among individuals on how long each of these antibodies might stay in your body. And that's part of the confusion with interpreting the results as well. So the antibody tests generally are measuring an IgM and an IgG antibody. A positive result for IgM is almost always indicative of a current Epstein-Barr virus infection, meaning you have it right now or you are on the edge of getting over it, maybe in the next month, maybe two months. On the other hand, a positive IgG test result without the corresponding positive IgM is usually associated with the past or previous infection of Epstein-Barr. So that's the simple version of how to look at it. Now, when looking at all the different types of IgG antibodies, that's where some of the confusion arises because some of them actually can indicate a reemergence of the virus before you actually see the IgM antibody, or sometimes you won't even see the IgM antibody at all. So now I'm going to show you some hypothetical results here, and then we'll discuss what some of the indicators are of these IgG antibody levels. All right, so in looking at how to read Epstein-Barr test results, it's important to look at some hypothetical examples here. And this one I thought illustrated a more simplistic result that you might find where there's clearly something going on with the Epstein-Barr virus in this person. So anytime the IgM is positive, that's always going to be an indicator of something current going on with that virus, whether it's you know, recent infection going on and they're actively going through symptoms or it's on its tail end. Sometimes you'll even see this with a positive like this with someone that's had seen bar, bar virus in the past and they're going through a new wave of uh, reemergence of that virus. And the replication of that virus needs to be suppressed so the immune system can get it in check. So you'll see on this that it's stated as equivocal, and that's because it didn't reach the actual threshold for being positive, which is 1.1. 1 
But even the 1.0 or equivocal is an indicator of a reemergence of that virus from its dormancy or a new infection. Now, the presence of the early antigen D being positive like that also indicates the new activity of that virus because the early antigen D is a early sign of infection or reactivation of the Epstein-Barr virus. So if you didn't have this, it would be less of an indicator of a current infection, but the presence of this alone could also be, even with this being negative, could also be an indicator. You always have to understand what's going on in the context of the person to really get the most out of these tests. So again, no one test tells us everything you have to look at, sometimes multiple tests, also in the context of the person's history and what's currently going on with them. Now, this result is more of an indicator of a past infection. You'll see that the IgG are positive here and the IgM is negative. Now, the nuclear antigen is all, almost always, when that's positive, going to be the result of a past infection or latent infection. So you've had the virus, the immune system spotted off. It's no longer producing symptoms in the person when you just have the nuclear antigen positive. The viral caps at IgG can go either way. Sometimes it can be an indicator of just a past infection simply. Sometimes it could be an indicator of a current infection. How do you know? Well, you check the other ones as well and also interpret it in the context of the person. Sometimes it's simply just a judgment call based on what's going on with the person and how they're presenting. Of course, one of the most common symptoms with Epstein-Barr virus mono is fatigue, and fatigue can be very nonspecific, like lots of things can cause fatigue. So in some cases, one of the things you want to do is make sure everything else is the way it should be. There's no other possible contributing factors to that fatigue. And that's why, of course, when you're trying to get a better understanding of what's going on with your body in the context of Epstein-Barr virus test results, you always want to get input from your doctor because they're going to know the most about what's going on with you. And you overlap that with the test results and come to the best option for you in terms of treatment and what to do moving forward for your health. And this is mostly important when there's not a clear indication that that IgM is positive. So how do I do? Does that give you a better understanding of how to read Epstein-Barr virus test results? Hopefully it does. If you have additional questions on this topic, drop it in the comment section. I may do a separate video on this topic. I'll definitely try and answer your question. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.